uh, for our discussion point, we were going, we were talking about doing a, um, a thing previewing the fall TV shows. And I'm going to hit on a couple of the shows here. Um, I'm hoping I'm pulling up the right one. Yeah, I'm pulling up the right one. Um, and this is, it's not really, we, and we, again, I should preface, we talked about this on menu on uh, Galactic Radio with some of the shows that are coming out that have a, a science fiction twist to them. Um, and, and this is excluding, and with that, I like I excluded the um, the CW Arrowverse of oh, shows. Galactic Radio coming to your podcast podcast catcher soon so keep your ears open for that yes um but and like so the but what i wanted to hit on was a couple of the shows that are coming out that really caught caught my eye whether they be uh mid-season replacements or you know coming out this fall sort of deal and good god take forever to freaking load website um and so the first one is, I believe it's coming on NBC or CBS, one of the two, and it's called, um, oh, it's that uh, Chris and Bell, uh, The Good Life, I think is what it is. Or, oh, The Good Place, sorry, The Good Place. Oh, um, that's right. I, I Oh, I do want to say that it's NBC, but yeah. I don't remember exactly. I want to say it's NBC too, because it sounds like it's them trying to revitalize their thursday night comedy thing but it's got but the the interesting part for this for me is it's chris and bell and it's uh ted Ted danson and this sounds like it's really an interest it's it's almost it's like one part dead like me uh one part um Oh, I can't think of what, what else, how else to compare it. Um, but it just, it looks like a really fun comedy and a safer comedy that Chris and Bell's done coming off of House of Lies, where I freaking love her in that, but I don't feel comfortable watching that show with my family sometimes. <laughs> um, and it's not really for anything else, just more like you get those weird moments where Marty's fucking a person. Oh, yay. Um, but it, yeah, it's coming out on Thursdays at eight 30. Um, it's from people who did parks and rec and Brooklyn nine, nine. Uh, so it's obviously got a good pedigree as far as the creators yeah. go. And it's, it's one of those things that I don't necessarily know that the trailers are doing it justice for um because of the fact that it's a um it, it it does part of it does sound like dead like me like she's dead with this but reading the preview it says it follows eleanor a new jersey woman who comes to realize that she hasn't been a very good person and so she decides to turn over. okay so it's dead like me meets um my name is earl um in, it's in also if if you ever and you probably haven't, there's a really great movie with Albert Brooks called Defending Your Life, where uh, he he dies and he's kind of he kind of has to convince the people in heaven to let him move on uh, to heaven. He's in a sort of purgatory, and it's yeah. like he could go back to Earth and start over again to get better at things. So it's kind of following the idea of of reaching Nirvana, um, but he meets a woman while he's there, and they go through their past lives, they go through their recent death and experience of life and everything, yeah. and it's it's a really solid solid movie. It's quite funny, and what 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 stands out about this is that it's it's one thing to say, okay, it's a person who just dies and they're dealing with death and all that, but what it this the premise is that she goes to the good place when she wasn't supposed to she was supposed to go to the other place and it was kind of like an accounting error and so there's this person running around in what is essentially heaven who doesn't belong in heaven 
and what is that going to uh, cause for everybody else that's there? Yeah, the uh, so, but is, yeah, so it looks like a good one. The other one, and I'm going off of the picture alone that they that the TV line uh, dot com article has, and it's because I look at it every time. I'm like, wait, is that Keen Peel? I'm like, no, that's Adam Pally. And it's a uh, it. We don't know when it's going to pre- premiere, but it it is it's it's a, it's a midseason replacement, and it should be on Sundays at eight thirty. And this is making history on Fox, and the people involved are uh, Adam Pally, Leighton Meester, and then Yasir Lester. Which I saw his name, like I was scrolling through and I saw Leighton Meester, and I saw him. I'm like, wait, did I see Leighton Meester? I'm like, no, I saw him. I'm like, I look up. Yeah, I saw Leighton Meester too. Um. And this is one of those time travel uh, shows that it you, you get these, these three friends played by these three actors as they time th- travel or as they travel through time uh, for truth, justice, and riches, and what complicates or which complicates their lives in 2016. And this se- sounds like it could be really good. It could be it, it could have the potential to be a show that's either comes back and gets a full season order um you know you know starting in the fall or could be that spring springtime summertime uh tv series yeah that, and one of the things we talked about on galactic radio was the fact that there seems to be a lot of time to have time travel themed shows this season uh cuz yeah. there's timeless there's this there's time after time there's the one that's based off the movie where the woman is is talking to her father through the radio and he's in the past and he had died and frequency frequency. Yeah, it, it's it's really weird that that and it, it seems like that happens every season is that there winds up being one or a couple of shows that are incredibly similar, at least outwardly in what the theme is. And you're like, how did how did they both decide to do that this season? You know, and it, it seems Oh yeah, I heard that they're developing this over there. Oh, we got something like that that we could put up. Let's let's see what happens and and stick them against each other. So I don't know, but yeah. uh, this being no, obviously Adam Paley, it's going to be more of a comedic take. Yeah, um, the next one is not a comedy at all, and it's just going to be sometime in the spring. It's uh, so it's going to be on NBC. No, it's on Fox. I'm just kidding. Uh, um, it, it's hey, you don't know where I'm going with this because it's. Uh, cause you don't have my screen and it's prison break. And the reason why I'm picking this is because I was a prison break fan beforehand. Um, and it was, so it was cool for me to see, um, went with Miller come in as captain cold and then, um, D- uh, Dominic Purcell come in as, um, as, uh, is it heat, stro- heat wave yeah, on, heat yeah, heat wave on, on flash. And then on legends, legends of tomorrow, and even to see uh, Sarah Wayne Callies, I'm like, wait, that's the girl from Prison Break. Holy crap. Yep. Because um, I watched Prison Break before the time of where I really had the internet and there was a thing like Wikipedia. So I'm like, who's this actress that plays this person on the show? Like I do now with everything I watch. It's like, that girl looks familiar. What's her name? Or that guy looks familiar. What's his name? And it's like Wikipedia. Oh, holy crap. I used to watch them on, on this thing or that thing. Um but the reason why is from watching this it's and it's just a 10 episode continuation of the hit series and it's oh and also i should point out it's got um mark feuerstein joining the cast and i'm like sold again sold i mean you got a lot of the original people coming in but then you add in mark feuerstein who was uh the lead on royal pains and i'm there but when i heard that they were going to do that this this was going to come back i'm like but how the lead character is dead yeah i mean and, that's the thing i didn't make it all the way to the end of prison break it, it was somewhere in the second season and i was like this kind of went off the rails uh, uh yeah it did that but then it got to like i think i skipped a season or something and then i got but i was able to get right back into it towards the end and i'm like all right this is getting wait what he's like they did a flash forward of like two years or something like that or actually i think it was more than that and it, uh uh sarah win Kelly's character has uh dominic or not dominic uh wentworth miller's character michael schofield has that their kid and they go and visit this tombstone and i'm sitting there thinking 
all right, it's Dom at the time. I'm like, okay, it's Dominic Purcell's character. Wait, Dominic Purcell, who are they visiting? Oh, and as a reveal of it's Michael Schofield who's dead, I'm like, well, shit, didn't see that one coming. And but it's a, a it's a cool concept here of Michael Schofield. Uh, first off, billing Michael Schofield as the as an escape artist, which is fairly true. Um. But it seems it seems like they have something something in plan here, and I'm I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, I mean Robert Nepper, who played uh, Teabag in the series, is apparently one of the people coming back to it. And something about him always I know this is going to be outside of your point of reference, but there is a character, uh, a couple characters that get introduced later on in Preacher. Uh, one of them is named yeah. TC. Uh, which stands for the chicken. I always kind of identified Robert Nepper uh, when I first saw him on Prison Break as TC. Uh, Beatmaster will understand what I'm talking about, but uh, he, he went slightly in a different direction in the show, but it was still, there's a good amount of creepiness yeah. to him. All right, and then finally the last one, um, I don't know how many I've picked, but the last one that I'm going to do that I'm looking forward to, and I think next week, Corey, will get yours. Um, and then the following week we'll do returners because this is all just new, and this is one that is hitting is, is it, from the commercials. It looks like it's going to scratch the familiar itch left by Parenthood, and it's on NBC. It's premiering September twentieth at ten p.m. Um, and then it'll move to its regular time slot on October eleventh, um, Tuesdays at nine, and that's This Is Us. At first, and they build it, in my mind, they build it great because it's just like, okay, this is a parenthood. If you liked parenthood, you're going to like this show. Um, You know, this big ensemble cast. And I didn't know what the through line was. I'm just like, okay, these they're all friends or something. But no, it's an hour-long dramedy that centers on a group of people born on the same day. Um, So I don't know if it's like, like and like one focus is on a married couple expecting triplets which is um, Milo Ventimiglia and Mandy Moore's characters. So I don't know if they're both born on the same day or like one of them is born on the same day. And then that's like, like it's Milo's character and Mandy Moore, Mandy Moore's just his, his wife. Um, and, but it all just seems so cool. Cause I, I, I love these, these drama shows. Like I love parenthood because it looked so real to me. Like it looked like for a lot of the stories that they were just showing real life. Like you weren't seeing these actors or actresses. You were seeing these actual people, you know, which is great to see. Um, and I feel like this is what, that's what this is going to be here too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Are you interested in the show or, or Corey or I haven't seen too much about it, but I, I've just discovered something about it the other day and so i haven't seen any kind of previews or anything i am a a long time mandy moore fan uh she's just i've always kind of liked her and yeah i don't really like Vito. what are no, 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 heroes Milo peter Vigilia. god damn mother but that's hey, okay hey, wait he, he was on gilmore girls too okay i've never that, watched gilmore girls i haven't either i would just figured i'd point point out for you uh, I, I, <laughs> so I am a fast talker and then I sometimes like now I've started listening to my podcasts at, uh, one and a quarter speed again, and I may go up to one and a half speed. So I also converse with podcasts when they're on. So I start talking <laughs> faster because I get used to them talking faster. And <laughs> I imagine that if I put on Gilmore girls at one and a half speed and started talking with that, I would essentially travel through time and probably be a pilot on NBC next season. So, uh, yeah, my wife has a problem with Gilmore girls because everybody talks fast on it. On the other hand, I don't know if she realizes that one of her favorite actresses was on that show for a long time. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, there's, again, there are more coming up. Um, there's, one coming out on ABC called Time After Time. I'm just looking through. Um, that it's got. It's about. A, it's about the epic adventures of a young H.G. Wells and his time machine. There's a whole bunch more. Ta Chris Chris Hardwick. If you thought his life was at all slow at all, he's going to be hosting a game show on NBC called The Wall. 
um, which I'm like, all right, dude, you're hosting the talking bleh on AMC, whichever one it would be on, um, whether it's talking dead, talking preacher, talking Saul, talking, talking head, you know, talking comic book, man, whatever you're doing at midnight, you're doing your podcast, you're, you're doing all these other things and you're going to do a game show. And Evan's pointing out that all the episodes for the wall have already been shot. Okay. Yeah. Great. What if it makes it to a second season <laughs> and all this stuff? It, I could, you know, I could, the thing is, is that we, we make fun of him, but, uh, he is the nerd Ryan Seacrest. Let's just put it out there. That's exactly what I was going to say. Ryan Seacrest has been doing that since American Idol started taking off for his career at, and it worked out. There are people who are workaholics. There are people who are just excited to go out and do stuff like this. Yeah. And I think, I think Hardwick's, I don't know if it's as much that he's a workaholic, but I think he's just so jazzed because he's he had that point in time where he was doing singled out on MTV and his career was starting to take off. And then because of complications that, you know, he brought it himself and he talks about that. Um, it, 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 it took a big step back for a while and he's lucky yeah. although, although lucky in the sense that he worked really hard for it to get back to being where he is today. And I think a lot of the reason why he's so successful is because he's very genuine now there are people who get tired of seeing him just like anybody else. He's like, all right, I have to see another goddamn Xfinity commercial with Chris Hardwick one more time. But I don't begrudge him. Okay. You, you, get, you get two choices here. Yeah. <laughs> so you get two choices here. You either get Chris Hardwick and the Xfinity commercials or Kevin Nealon and the charter commercials. Well, I don't know anything about Kevin Nealon's charter commercials, so there. I saw them. I saw it once because apparently Upper Michigan, it's not Comcast, it's Charter. Yeah, because Upper Michigan, it's just a hate crime waiting to happen on your TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just think go for it. You know, you have this opportunity. I, I would like to see him act. You know, and I don't know why that hasn't been more of a thing that happened because I think that he would be generally good at it. On the other hand, I'd like to get another hard and firm album. Uh, cause I, I really <laughs> like his work on that. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I do the game show, do, do I, everything I, that you can do as long as you don't burn yourself out. And you know, he obviously, he just got married in the last month. Uh, he, yeah. he is doing a ton of stuff, but then you're seeing the successes of people who, have been on Nerdist with them. You know, Jonah Ray's going to be doing the new um, MST3K. It, every bit of success that these people get, I feel like it's it's an earned success, and I'm, I'm excited for them. Even if it's not all for me, even if it's not all stuff that I'll necessarily want to watch. Like, I haven't tuned into At Midnight in a while, um, but I love the Which fact that that show... Now. Yeah, I love the fact that that show's out there, and I love the fact that Chris is you know, got that show. And I, I love the fact that he's doing all the talking, whatever shows, because he's, he's a genuinely to me in my mind, he's a genuinely cool guy. And I'd rather see him get that stuff than some token fake, whatever that they just put in a nerd shirt. And I'm not big on the fake nerd thing, but there are some people you can tell are, are just like, Oh, yeah. we took this guy from the E channel and we, we, put him in this shirt and and made it seem like he was he was part of your culture when he'd rather be talking about Kardashians. Uh, in both cases, that's Joe McHale. Uh, <laughs> just, I was just going to say Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, I mean, if Ryan Seacrest was doing the nerd shows, I would probably have more of a problem with it because I, I just don't yeah. buy into it that that's his bag. You know, it's not that if it was his bag, I'd be OK with it. If it was like he genuinely likes it, then that would be fine. But I just don't really feel like it is something that he likes. And I'd rather see someone who's who's into it like I am. 